problem is I don't have 45 hours to go through 62 novels, so okay. I had to make some cuts. Okay. But yeah, there's a lot of cool shit to have. They go back in time and they acquire dinosaurs well, and become asking. fucking dinosaurs. It's fucking cool. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Ben just left because he was sure of not. He's not in jail. I guess not. Um, okay, so we can just start getting into the plot now, I suppose. Let's do it. Unless you have... No, no. Okay. no we're ready. Cool. I'm fucking strapped in, man. So the first, the first couple books, is book one through 12, um, picks up right where I kind of just left off, right? So Elfengor dies, gives him the power to morph. They watch Elfengor get, like, brutally murdered. And, like, the next day, they're just like, shit, guys, what do we fucking do? This, like, is really fucking messed up. And they can't really talk about it. They can't really do anything about it. They're just like, we have to decide if we're going to actually fight or not. And they all kind of have, like, some arguments about it. And they kind of defer to Jake. Because, again, Jake is seen to them as, like, kind of, like, the leader. And so it's like, Jake, we'll do whatever you want to do. And um, they, uh, 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 basically, they, Jake is kind of leaning towards, like, this is, like, the ethically responsible thing to do. Like, this is, like, you know, we've been given this responsibility. Like, with great power comes great responsibility kind of thing. But he's not really personally invested and doesn't really want to put everyone, all of his friends' lives in danger. Um, until he finds out that his brother, Tom, no relation, um, is a controller. Because Tom, before the book series begins, has been trying desperately to get him and his best friend, Marco, which is the other character. I don't even think I've been talking about the characters, so I'll probably do that in a second. But uh, Marco, is so kind of like, Marco is Jake's best friend. He's kind of like uh, the comedic sort of guy. He's, he's kind of a jokester. He takes everything uh, kind of cynically, and, and uh, he's like the Michelangelo, I guess you would say. Um, the reason, it's implied the reason he kind of approaches everything with like a cynical kind of mindset is that his, uh, a year before the book series starts, his mother died in a boating accident. He's just kind of getting over that. Um, but Marco deduces that uh, the sharing, which is like this like weird kind of like uh, youth program that uh, Tom was involved in, uh, is a front for the U.S. to recruit children and convince them to become controllers either uh, doing it like willingly, because they're kind of like leeching off of uh, kids. So the Yurks are like deeply integrated into our society. The Yurks, yes, at this point the Yurks are deeply integrated into human society, and they've kind of decided instead of approaching an open warfare thing like they've done with the other races, they're doing it subtly because they are leveraging uh, people's innate desire to be on, belong to something bigger than themselves. And so the sharing is their way of kind of like manipulating people emotionally to join them, either willingly or otherwise. I was just curious for a little more detail on like what the pitch of the sharing is. Like, why would you <clears throat> want to join the sharing if you're some asshole? Um. Well, it's like a popular club. Yeah, it's like it's kind of it's it's it, they they kind of prey on like the downtrodden of society. You know, it's like they, they go after like the emotionally vulnerable, like kids. You know, kids who kind of don't feel like they don't belong and they need someone to be and, sh and shit like that. Mm -hmm. And so Tom is like a big. He's like been to the sharing for a while. So this is when Jake realizes, like, oh, my brother has not been my brother for, like, years now, and I just never realized it. Um, so that kind of makes, gives him, like, a personal stake in getting involved in this conflict. I, I'm just curious, like, how long they've been on Earth, the Yerks, doing this now? They have been on Earth, um, we'll get to it more once we get to Visser, but, uh, just for, uh, they have been on Earth since the Gulf War. What's up? So, wait, when you wraps around your brain, he has access to all of your memories. Okay, so he knows exactly how to be you. Okay, so you are trapped. You Basically, you have like a, another entity peeking into your mind with all your thoughts, all your memories, all your desires and dreams and shit. Exactly and so he can leverage that to perfectly mimic how you would act. This is why they're really good at taking those species over, because they're very hard to detect. Right. Morphing, morphing is a technology where it's 
Assassination, even from their own kind. Sure. Yeah. We're good. We're yeah, good. We're good. Good. We're good. Okay. Um. So, let's see. Before I go any further, the only character. I think we didn't talk about all five of the dudes. Right. I talked to just started talking about the only character I love talking about is Tobias. Mm. Tobias is like. Tobias is. Love Tobias. Tobias is great. He's like the emo loner kid who was like picked on and bullied in school. And he's, like, not friends with the other characters at the start of the series. Like, Jake just met, met him, like, a few days ago because he's getting bullied. And Jake's like, hey, fucking stop that. And so, like, Tobias kind of, like, took to Jake. But they're not really friends at the start of the series. And, like, Tobias is kind of trying to be very kind of, like, empathic. Like, one of the things that he does right from the beginning of the book that kind of separates him from everybody else is that when everyone else is running away because the fucking Yerk ships are coming to, to kill Alfengor, he, like, stays with Elfengor for a second, tries to, like, you know, to, like, say goodbye properly, like, calm him down and shit like that. It's, like, he has, like, this weird bond with Elfengor, and, uh... Wait, Elfengor is still, like, alive on the ground after the ship was taken off? No, this is... No, no, this is... This is, this is just one... Down. Down. Yeah, so, like, so everyone else immediately balls, like, oh, God, we're aliens, but Tobias stays with him and, like, tries to just, like, you know, like, kind of get, get some, like, closure or whatever with him. It's, like, weird. Mm -hmm. He's just, he's just, like, a very kind of sensitive yeah, kind of guy. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So you can get, like, extra scarred for life. Um, and that's just the beginning. Oh, that's, that's bullshit. The Tobias doesn't deal with it. <laughs> He's definitely, like, punished Tobias, like, throughout yeah. the whole fucking series. <laughs> it's pretty brutal. Um, anyway, so once Jake finds out that his brother is a controller, um, they also eventually find out that their principal, Principal Chapman, is also a controller. So the principal of their school, so while they're in school, they got to make sure they don't slip, spill the beans, because... Their principal, and assuming the other teachers, are all aliens as well. They're kind of trying to like, infiltrate positions of like semi-authority because the Yurks are still climbing the, the ladder as well. But um, so they once they realize that like this shit is real, it's happening, and like it's in, it's in we're involved whether we want to or not because it's around us now. They decide to take action, and so one of the first things they figure out is they figure out the location of the Yurk pool. So the Yurk pool is like again that portable Kendrona. It's not really portable, but it's like a Earth-based Kendrona pool where they go to pee and like replenish themselves every three days. And so if they can destroy this pool, they can do massive amounts of damage to the Earth because they will all start starving to death because they have no way of replenishing themselves. So they find a entrance to the Earth pool under there. So they decide to try and infiltrate it and do some damage. Um, so they go to uh, Cassie's place, they get some uh, bird marks and stuff, and then they go to uh, the garden, which is kind of like a, a zoo. Um, Happenstances big animals that they use throughout the series. Jake's battle morph is usually a tiger, um, Eric Grace is usually an elephant or a grizzly bear, Cassie's a wolf, uh, Marco's a giant fucking gorilla, and so is Alan, it's fucking cool. Tobias? Tobias is. Um, he's, battle morph is, he doesn't really have a battle morph, he's usually a red tail hawk, he does mostly do um, so he does like a lot of spying and stuff, so like, uh, he's, he's already kind of like displaced and kind of like aloof, so instead of like being afraid, he's kind of, just like, I just want to be a bird, and just fly around, and like, he, he kind of expresses like interest in like birds because like the free and being able to fly, and like, this is, his home life is already shitty, like his parents are murdered, or they got murdered, he doesn't, he doesn't know what happened to his parents, He's like been shipped from from like relative to relative, and none of his relatives like him. So he just like the freedom of being a bird and being able to escape from the bullshit that is to punish Tobias life uh, gives him a lot of comfort. And so uh, he likes being a red tailed hawk, and that's the form that he chooses a lot. This is book one. This is book one. They're not. They're like 150 pages, and the text is pretty big. 
But there's 62 of them. And, like, eight of those books are, like, double that. So there's a lot to get through. There's a lot that I cut from here. And I already know that I'm too long, so I'm going to have to hurry this fucking along. Um, so they decide to go attack the Ruffalo. They get their fucking battle mechs. Uh, Tobias goes in first to get up hot, trying to, like, shut the place out. Again, they all have telepathy, so they can stop speaking, go in there, scout out what's going on. The Yurt Pool is fucking huge. Like, massive. Way bigger than they expect. It's, like, the size of a small city down there. And there's, like, and there's multiple entrances, like, all throughout the fucking city there. It's huge. They can't even, like, comprehend. So the idea of, like, let's blow this up, no longer on the table. They realize immediately they're way in over their head. And the fucked up thing is that there's, like, tons of people screaming in cages and shit. But there's also people just chilling, watching TV. There's a bunch of willing controllers down there who are just, like, hanging out, having a good time. Why the fuck is this willing controller? Because people are fucking stupid, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Did you? If that's how you want to interpret it, who am I to Some people If your life is really fucking shitty, yeah. and these people, these aliens offer you some deal, they can give you money, they can give you power, they can give you better life. You can be in the background watching them do your life better than you could. What is being a controller other than being on a live stream 24-7? Okay, so the only thing that, that could possibly slip is it, it seems like there would be... <laughs> Physical discomfort of being in a backseat as someone else operates your body. And to live like that the vast majority of the time seems like it would be a very bad way to do this. I mean, I mean that's just like your opinion. I guess so. Right. 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 It's like this. Bring it 2020 or your controller. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're doing. We're walking into your controller. Yeah. 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 So, huge fucking pool, they don't really know what to do. This is their first mission, they're, they're super fucking green, they have no idea what they're doing. They fuck it up really bad. Uh, they, they, they try and like, like, like Cassie ends up getting captured, they're trying to just random wolf walk around, they get, they get pissed off about it, so they have to try and bomb it, like stuff goes out the window immediately, Tobias just like hides up in a fucking corner because he's a hawk and he can't do anything, and like he can't like demorph in the, in the middle of the thing. Because one of the things they decide to do after this book, and during this fight actually, is that all the, um, the jerks assume that they're being attacked by Andalite vampires. Because Andalites are the only ones who have this technology. They are not yet aware that human children have been given this power. So the kids decide to roll with it. They pretend to be Andalites by either saying nothing or talking in a way that would imply Andalite people are not children. So for the vast majority of this entire series, Everyone assumes that this is a world band of Andalites that survived the battle that happened above Earth that Elsengore died in, that are still continuing the fight. Because this gives them a huge advantage because they're not looking for humans with this power on Earth. Right. Which gives them the ability to stay on the down low. So they never demorph around anybody else because they morph back to humans, they're covered with blood. So this is another complication because like you can't just like demorph or remorph into something else. You have to kind of like be in a safe place to do so. So, they get their shit fucking rocked. Uh, they all have to make a really embarrassing retreat. Jake goes there specifically to save his brother, and he's unable to do so, and is really fucking pissed off about it. Um, Tobias is unable to escape with everybody else. So, he, they all escape. They're trying to find where Tobias is. He's just still in the yurt pool trying to find a window to get out. And by the end of the book, he is trapped as a hawk. For the rest of the entire series, Tobias is just a hawk. He passes a two hour limit to start the hawk and off way. Continues that Tobias might have done it on purpose because he hated his life so much and wanted him out. Do, do we see the detective? Like, every book is every book is written first person on a different character. So the next the next book I'm going to talk about is probably not. How do you see that he did it on purpose versus retroactively as a favor? Because that's what I'm saying. Like, 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 like
Uh, it's never made clear. It's, la it's left up to reader interpretation. Oh, some characters, like some of the, the main characters, believe that he did it on purpose mm -hmm. because as time goes on, he kind of starts really enjoying life as a hawk, right. which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, oh, I, I, I remember <laughs> that, like, um, this night you weren't supposed all to be enjoying the time you're in high school. Well, <laughs> well okay. I guess you're stuck in it. <laughs> all, the all the time, these books talk about, like, the joy of flying and the pleasure of finding, like, a good thermal updraft to yes. like, catch your yeah. face yeah. on the Oh, it's like, oh, flying is so fucking hard. It sucks. It's hard. It's like, oh, my muscles. Oh, but then you get an updraft and you're like, oh, you exactly. so, Yeah. Why do you buy some news for that? You live for, for finding good travel. Like, <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> 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 be fucking no. It's never been any hot. You're going high instead of being high. But yeah, the, 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 whole, the whole reason that. Every fucking book they go on about. Well, the whole reason Kay Applegate wrote this, and I don't understand the, the like the logical through line between these two points. She was asked at one point, "Why did you write this series?" And she's like, "Well, I just really like animals, and I want to communicate to kids why how how cool animals are." <laughs> so this was the best one. I don't. I, I, there's a huge leap in logic here that I don't exactly understand. You know what she wanted to go clearly, and all the emails just and she was like, oh, fuck it, I put aliens in whatever. <laughs> oh, 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 whoops, my whole fucking 70 book yeah. uh, uh, war Mas space, masterpiece uh, is a big message about the, the perils of war and PTSD and trauma, oops. Featuring, like, giant, like, leaps of logic and sci-fi technology yeah. that you have to discuss so from zero space. I <laughs> <laughs> I realized that the series about space travel, uh, like it did the, the bare bones of explaining how they travel faster than the speed of light. That's that's the first check mark to know this is somewhat legit science. Uh, there is in the in the Analyte Chronicles, they actually when they're talking about traveling um uh, from uh, through zero space to Earth, or they get out of zero space and they're saying like we couldn't have gotten to Earth in a matter of hours, but because of relativity, if we went full self light. Uh, because we were so close to see the light, years would have passed on Earth, and you don't want to do that. So they're even keeping that in mind. Yeah, exactly. I was like, damn, someone watched Gunbuster. Hell yeah. So that's funny. There's a lot of like little, little things like that. Anyways, so their first mission, totally fucked up. Bad. Um, at, uh, yeah. You good? Oh, not a hammer. Oh, yeah. You wasn't Jamar hit. You, you get off of it that one time. I'll give you one. I'll give you one dab this entire lecture and you used it. Okay. So, Tobias is a mom. I know what happened. <laughs> I, as soon as I said it, I'm like, there's no way that's going to stick. So, so, Tobias, there's like a whole book from Tobias' perspective after this happens dealing with being a hawk. And so, it kind of implies it's like, the next book where they talk about Tobias, it's been like a couple weeks since their first battle. They're like licking their wounds, like Jesus fucking Christ, they almost died. Animals are real. This is really fucked up. And so all this time, they're like, our friend Tobias is now just a fucking bird. How do we deal with this? So Tobias can't really go home. He's a bird. So he's just kind of living out in the woods. He's like, I guess I'll try and use this like hawk instinct sort of thing. And then like, they kind of send him back and forth from some of their houses, like Jake will like bring like a hamburger up from the eat and like leave it on their windowsill. He'll come over and just like eat at it. But this whole time, the hawk instincts are still there. And so like he'll just be flying around. He'll notice a movement like there's a fucking mouse in my head. I really want to fucking eat that mouse. But I can't, that's disgusting. I can't I'm, I can't do that. I'm a human being. I'm not gonna eat a mouse. Uh, eventually after the book he just breaks eats a mouse, describes in vivid detail the absolute joy he gets of ripping into his intestines and pulling it out as the blood goes down his gullet, and he's so fucking happy he eats his mouse. And he, like, has a psychotic breakdown. He, goes, he goes to the mall in bird form, he's trapped in bird, and slams into the fucking wall of the mall, attempting to kill himself because oh, he is so God. fucked up. This is a book, this is the first book I read at <laughs> And so his friends have to, his team. Like, hashtag related. Oh, that was fucking moving. So, Tobias is my boy, and this is the reason. I get I get where he's coming from. So, like, his friends have to, like, talk him out of it and shit like that. Like, dude, like, it's, it'll be okay. Like, we'll find a way to, like, turn you back. This is super fucked up. But, like, I don't fucking know. And so, 
Tobias ends up deciding that the only way to like keep on to his latch on to his lingering humanity at this point is to continue to fight with his friends because the only way to connect them to like anything more than just a normal pop like Tobias and Tobias. Okay. Uh, so the next thing so Axe is like the sixth fucking character that really gets introduced. And so Axe, the Poochie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I'm not, I can't deal with this right now. Axe isn't on screen. All the other characters should be asking, Where's Axe? Where's Axe? I hate my life. So, this, they find Axe. Axe is like, um, his full name is. I know this. Axemillion Espeon. And no, Correct. Woo! He's Elfengor's younger brother. And they find out that like so there was there was a big battle that happened in Love Earth at the beginning of the book series. And Elfengor's fighter was shot down and he died. Uh, but there also have these big ships that have both dome ships. Because Andalites are like, you know, they're urban wars and they're great and they have to like run around across fields and stuff to eat. So their ships are like these big fucking battleships, but the top of them have these big domes that contain like a big field. It's like an artificial recreation of their home planet. And much like the Enterprise D, when battle happens, the dome separates from the other part of the ship. So the ship does battle, and the dome takes off another place. And so Axe is a young Axe or Eretz, which is a Eretz. It's just a fucking weird word. All of the Andalite words sound fucking weird because they all thought speech. Shut the fuck up. I knew someone was going to say that to Daenerys. So he's, 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 he's the equivalent of a cadet. And because he's a cadet, he wasn't allowed to fight in the battle. He's really fucking selfish about it. Because he doesn't know what happened to the rest of the people. He's just trapped underwater in this artificial dome. And he's just like sending out like thought speech like, where are my bros at? Please help. Underwater? He crashed into the earth. Yeah. Oh, right. so, oh, so he's okay. the dome. He's the, the dome is under the ocean. Sorry, some underwater interference. Fans are in rail, he knows. Yeah. He thinks he knows everything about Axe and Alright, get back down here, okay? Come on, we're going. Okay, okay. Alright, so basically they have to morph uh, dolphins. They go to like the, the gardens equivalent of Sea World, fire dolphins, and go out into the ocean, try and go after, find Axe. Because he's like sending out thought speech like, Andalites, help please, I'm underwater, but Visser Free, the main bad guy, is also an Andalite. So he can hear this. So they're, it's like a race to find Axe. So. Um, it's kept intentionally vague throughout the majority of the series. We talked about it in the end. The reason it's kept vague is because all these books are written in first person, and they're written in the style of a journal. Like, this character is basically writing it to you, and uh, they, the books always start out with, like, I can't tell you my last name. I can't tell you where I live. They could find me. It's written in a way that it's like a character writing to you in the reality of the world that it takes place in. So you only know the character's first name. And I'll be actually No. It's just them keeping a journal, and like we, I mean, we we don't technically exist in the world. They're they're writing as if. We, we okay. okay. So given that they are like you know different narrators from different books, like are they huh? all reliable all the time? Yeah. Are, are there any episodes where like one character's story might differ from another, but like your recollection is based on? No, nothing really that complex. Okay. Um, they're still from, still for nine year olds at the end of the day. Allegedly, yeah. I was going to say, so when you say there was a battle of above, what exactly do you mean? Like, we have satellites, so we do have some connection to, like, an orbit. Like, would we be able to look up and see, like, a big blast of a laser beam? Your and Andalite ships look at our technology and laugh at it. Like, there are multiple times where, like, the Andalites and the are just, like, human satellites, super easy to fucking avoid detection. Like, we're fucking babies. It's, like, not even... There's so are they like invisible to our technology or like pretty much? I mean, some ships have like active cloaking, most don't. Um, but like they, they just can they're they're designed in a way that like our radar can't detect them. 
Okay. They don't want no. to be. Yeah. Uh, Things like that. It seems like you're going to ask other staff about her. I've uh, been curious. So, so, Cass was present during that battle where es- Eskimor, Elkimor, Elkimor, Elkimor got shot down. Were there many other Vandalites also fighting that battle? Yeah. It, it's, it's implied that basically there was a battle that happened and you're a swarm. Because the Andalites, at this point, have no presence on Earth. The Yurks do. They've been here for years now. So this is like an attempt by the Andalites to, like, try to gain some territory on Earth, perhaps. Yes. By fighting the Yurks fleet that was there. Maybe they'd save them if they wanted to. Right. They did not win. They did not win. Okay. They lost. Pretty bad. It was a decisive victory for the Yurks. This battle was. So, basically, long story short... They get under there, they find Axe, they free him, he kind of joins their team, he's like the sixth ranger of the group, as it were. Um, he's a giant centaur man. So, he does. What he does is, there's there's like a thing you can do where, uh, it's like an advanced morph intention, but if like I acquired Gib, Nate, and you, all of my quick succession, I can like mix your DNA to a unique form and become somebody completely new. I'm assuming. Oh God! Did you become like a half tiger, half elephant? I don't think it works with cross species. I think you're taking samples of a step. That would be right. It would be fucking late. DNA from Rachel. There's two girls, two boys. Is he a boy or is he a girl? There. He's described as an effeminate-looking guy. Ooh. Very progressive. Um. They them pronouns. Not really. It's a little too early for that, but if it was really out, probably. Does he go by he or she? I'm just curious. He goes by he because oh, yeah. he's, a boy, he's a boy as an animal. Oh, oh, yeah. oh okay. sure, sure. You good? Okay. So, uh, just some cool things we'll talk about Axe. This is not going to come up in the series. Axe is, like, enamored by taste. Because when he's in a human form, like, like Andalites don't have a sense of taste. They just absorb nutrients from plant life and grass, mostly through their foods. So when he becomes a human, he is, like, fascinated with making, like, mouth noises because they not, something completely alien to So he's talks like an idiot. <laughs> he's trying to figure out how to speak. And, like, he's fascinated by food, and he'll put things in his mouth that aren't food just because he wants to see what it tastes like. It's really dumb. He, like, this is it. He has decided that cigarette butts taste good. That's one of the things he decided that he liked. Um, but his number one favorite thing is cinnamon buns. He loses fucking shit whenever he has cinnamon buns. And it's like a meme throughout the entire series. That it's like, all right, this battle's over. And Axe is like, I want cinnamon buns. And I'm like, all right, Axe, we'll go to the mall and get you some cinnamon buns. He goes on at least one actual, like, wild rampage through the mall. Yes, the first time, the first time he, you know how, like, like they morphed into termites and went ape shit. Yeah, yeah. Ask for human. Had a cinnamon bun and then went ape shit. Yeah. Like they had to like leave the mall because like it's the human craving for cinnamon <laughs> buns <laughs> drove them to like tear them on the That, fire. but unironically, yes, that is what happened. It's hilarious. There's one book where like he actually like gets a part time job at the cinnamon because he just wants access to cinnamon buns and they're just like he the guy that tells him like just clean off the tables and he assumes that means lick up the crumbs of his tongue and just like goes full spur it's amazing. The 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 way these books are usually structured is that the first chapter or two is like funny shenanigans, brutal war. It's like total shit. You're like whoa. And that's every book. It's how it works. It's like, this was cute. It's not cute anymore. So, so that's kind of acts. Like, oh, I'm so endeared to these characters. Oh, God. Oh, they God. They just they have the armor. Oh, they're exploding. They they're exploding. <laughs> it's, it's really good. It's a bait and switch of epic proportions. So that's Axe. He's cool. He's like my second favorite character. He's constantly torn throughout the series of like, his allegiance to his people versus like helping his friends on Earth. Because like, his people look down on humans. They're fucking babies. So like his kind of arc throughout the series, like realizing that like we're kind of not total bullshit. Um, he's also really smart with computers and shit because like, he's advanced technology. He can like hack into anything and stuff like that. It becomes very thoughtful. Spend a lot of time on hackertyper.com. Oh um, yeah, of course. But um, he he kind of like him and Tobias become really good friends because they're both kind of displaced from like the rest of society. And so Tobias ends up living out in the woods. He like makes like you know the like 
Quinn's like a little like a fucking field or something out there. And Ash kind of lives right outside because like uh, Andalites have these little homes they call scoops, which is kind of like a small field of grass. They hate being confined in spaces and stuff. So they like live really close to each other behind Cassie's uh, uh, wildlife clinic. So they become bros, um, which is pretty fucking cool. Okay. Uh, another good thing about Axe is that uh, every uh, era has to have a prince. A prince is not a, a royalty rank. It's like it's like a rank in the military. There's like the, uh, the cadet, then there's a prince, and there's a war prince, and a captain. When you're a captain, you get your own ship, and that's like the highest rank you can get in the military. Is that what Elfengor was? Elfengor was a prince. He was not a war prince, and he was not a captain, just a prince. But he was like a highly decorated prince because he had lots of very important victories in the war up until one death. Um, so Axe's kind of motivation at the beginning of the books is to live up to his brother's lin- like legacy and like kind of step out from out of his shadow because he's still a little kid doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Um, so because he doesn't have a prince anymore, he refers to Jake, the leader, as Prince Jake, much to Jake's uh, displeasure. So the, 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 the bit all the time is he'll be like, yes, Prince Jake. And Jake's like, just call me Jake. Yes, Prince Jake. He will not, he, he refuses to, to do it. How wacky and charming. Yeah, you know, just one of the yeah, little things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, have you seen this? It's, it's like this yeah, is yeah, it. The prince is huge. It's so funny because like light novels are marked by like a little older. Yeah. Yeah. Is a light novel. Diggy. They're these are translated into Japanese. They have hand illustrated covers instead of the CGI ones, nightmares, and they are interspersed with illustrations of the scenes happening, just like a light novel. That sound makes way more sense. Real estate. It, it, they look pretty cool. It's so much more aesthetic than the U.S. covers, and I was really sad about it. I tweeted about it if you want to see one. Um, okay, so the next thing we need to talk about is Visser 1. So Visser 1 is the highest ranked Yurk outside of the Council of 13. So the head boss of the Yurks and the leader of the invasion on Earth ends up coming back to Earth to check up on what the fuck is going on. Visser 3 is basically the guy in charge of the Earth invasion. He's in charge of the Earth invasion, but Visser 1 is like the one who started the invasion. Kind of like Visser 3's job is to kind of like carry on while they're out doing other stuff. Okay, so Visser 1 is the head of like the entire year of society. Well, not just. No, no he's under the council. He, he outranked Visser 3. Oh, except but the, the, the council. council is the The council is like the head. I would say, it's, it's, it's kind of like Visser 1 comes, he invades. Essentially, essentially. It's interesting to know that, like, I'm curious about the scale of the conflict here. These are these are intergalactic. I mean, going we'll on. get to it like in more detail around here, but just to kind of give you an idea of what's going on at this point, the Yurks are the underdogs in this fight. The Andalites are. There's far more of them. Um, they have better technology because they've been they've been a spacefaring species for much longer. And again, the Yurks naturally are slugs. So they're completely relying on enslaving other species in order to have any sort of like fighting chance against anybody. There's only um just now found the perfect Correct. The reason Earth is so good is they capture Earth, they outnumber the Andalites significantly. Because we're basically the shock troopers that would carry them through to victory in this war. But like a human is no match for like an Andalite or a horse no. or a Taxon but combat. but in, as we find out in the in the in the, uh, the Chronicles books, billions of of people on a planet is not common. When when they stumble upon Earth and like they report that we found Earth, there are five billion people, and they're like million people. No, billion, and they all collectively nut because like that's like a goal. I guess I'll ask this. Sci-fi questions like, okay, if you're capable of like faster than like travel and stuff, do you think that at a certain point, like civic manpower, even if it's in the billions, wouldn't hold a candle to like, for example, just a ship's ability to travel faster than the speed of light? Like that, like, you could use that as a weapon, for example, to like detonate a planet potentially, which would seems like would outweigh the just. A billion extra troops on one particular planet. Well, is that not the case? Sure, but you have to understand the motivation for the Yurks is just to have bodies. Yeah. Because yeah. they. That, that's the bottleneck. Because there's right. plenty of Yurks on the Yurk land, planet. They and just they they have no bodies. They're, they, they, they're blind. They have they have like no capacity to do anything. Their, their end goal 
The only reason they want to enslave is because they want bodies. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But I was gonna say, I thought it was really strange that like if they if this is intergalactic and presumably there's thousands, maybe millions of planets trying to fucking I guess the scale is actually lower than that. Because there's only a, a billion of these. This is the only class five species the Earth has ever encountered. And as we'll find out in this it took years to even find this planet. So, so it actually it makes sense why they're literal top people on top of this. Yes. So this is the key of victory. Exactly. Okay. Not in victory, but like just like thriving as a species. Sure, okay. Because at this point, they've they've only been spacefaring for a few decades. Uh, right. They stole all this technology. It is not something that so, has been so, so. meteor rocks. Exactly. Right? Huge. Uh, is there any reason that the uh, uh, Um the are really good and they wouldn't like genocide for people? They're good boys. I mean, would they? Uh, like I said, uh, maybe, uh, I think. Uh, all right. Okay, he's looking at me. Uh, 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 we'll, get to, it. we'll okay. get to it. We'll okay. get to it. We'll get to it. All right. So, it's, it's, it's all good. All right. Sounds uh, like I might be thinking like a certain Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, Visser 1 comes back to check up on their pet project. Is Visser 1 in a whole figure? No. What's he in? I will get to it. It's black. Okay. It's black and black. This is crucial to me. I want to know what body everyone's got. Sure. Okay. So, Visser 3 is an Andalite. Mm-hmm. Everybody else has their own body. That's the only work that matters so far. We really talked about Um So, Visser 1 uh, comes to Earth, and Axe is trying to... At this point, he is, like, tentatively working with the Animorphs. But he does not like want to stay here long term. His goal is to get back to his people. Get out of the world. You know, he's got his own shit going on. He wants to rejoin the war effort. This is like a personal conflict for him and also most of his people. So he tried to create a transponder to contact his his people and and get back into the war. Um, yeah, yeah. Let me just make sure I got the sequence of events proper. Okay. So. This is like a couple weeks after. There's been there's a couple books in between here that I kind of left out. So they've had a couple of small skirmishes with Victor and shit like that. And at this point, this this particular part of the story is told from Marco's perspective, and he's sick of the war. The reason he's sick of the war is that his father, who's still reeling over the loss of uh, his wife and his mother, you know, Marco's mother, he doesn't want to be killed because they've had a lot of close calls already, and leave his father alone. And so he's kind of weighing his options and is like, I would much prefer walking away from this and staying with my dad than having to have him, quote, visit two graves. Did you already explain what killed Marco's mom? Did I miss that? Um, she was killed in like a, she was like a, it was, a boating it was a boating accident. Not year related. No, a year before the series, she was killed in a boating accident. Okay. And that's why he's, he's adopted like a joking, comedic, cynical perspective in order to deal with the trauma of losing his mom. You said that they're going on missions. I'm just curious. So now that they know they can't just destroy the pool, the Yerks pool or whatever. Mm-hmm. So like, what is their goal? Is it to save individuals from the Yerks? Or? Their their goals is basically just be a thorn in their side in any way possible. Because what the, what they're waiting for is that Axe kind of lets them know that like there should be more Andalites coming to save you guys. Okay. It will take some time, and he estimates that like reinforcements could arrive naturally in maybe like a year or so. Okay. So for a, the majority of the series, they're trying to basically just cause as much problems for them as possible, stalling until the Andalites come and bail them out. Okay. And that's kind of the premise for a lot of the series. Um, so Marco is just like, I don't, as, as important as this fight is, and as bad as I feel about leaving my friends, my dad is too important. I can't, I can't take the risk because. In the beginning of this book, he almost dies in like one of the fights. He's just like, I can't do this, I can't do this. You know, I've been disemboweled as a gorilla again. This is fucking ridiculous. You know, there's only so many times you can go through that. So he's like, fuck it, I'm not doing this. This mission we're on to, to fuck with Visser One is the last one I'm on, and then I'm done. So they go and find out they, they, they are gonna help Ash create this transponder. This, they, they, we'll get to it. So he goes, they go and try and create this transponder so Axe can find out and they hopefully expect the arrival of the Andalites to help them. This would be his last mission. And so they meet Visser 1 here because 
they send out a signal. They want to basically capture a Yerk fighter and use a communication array on the fighter to contact the Andalites. A fighter ship, like a fighter ship, like a Yerk fighter. They're called bug fighters. Uh, so I think it's like not actually what they're called. It's like the name of the fighter. A bug fighter, use the communication array, contact the Andalites, and get hacks, either hacks off world so he can get his people and have them come to them. And I guess Visser 3 and Visser 1 figure out that this is a ploy and capture them. They basically set a trap inside of the trap. And so they're all captured and they bring them to Visser 1. They're all still in war. They are now like, fuck, we need to get out of here in a couple hours before we're all trapped. Uh, or we can just be fucking murdered before that even happens. So we have two problems to worry about at the same time. And so they meet Visser 1, and Visser 1 is Marco's mom. Whoa! Yes, Marco is still alive and is the leader of the fucking uh, Yurks right now. So he's fucking really pissed about this for obvious reasons. Now he's back in the game. He's like, all right. Right. It's, it's really bad. This is just like that scene in Berserk where fucking Guts is like trapped and like constantly raging and like his mom under like control. And he's like raging. So he's pretty fucking pissed about this. So the interesting thing here to learn though is that Visser 1 and Visser 3 fucking hate each other. They both have different visions for how this invasion should be going. Visser 1 is all about like tact and subtlety and like manipulating the situation by like, using the sharing and just kind of like silently fuck each. She, ideally, Visser 1 would like to take over the entire planet without firing a shot. Because like we're just like gullible and manipulative and primitive, but we have numbers. The biggest problem with the Yurks right now is they don't have numbers. Every casualty is a big deal because as a body they don't have an easy way to replace. So if they can do this subtly, that's good for them. Wait, Visor Two. Visor Two does not come into play until way fuck later. Okay, um, something else. He's just they, they're they're kind of. There's there's a lot of things. There's there's there's. Let's talk about one, two, and three. Keep yeah. Visor 2, he comes in later in the series, but he's still only a minor character. I don't, I don't think I'm going to talk about him, um, but he does eventually show up for a little bit. Um, he's a demon. Pussy face! Sorry. Is someone's dad, someone's mom? Give me something! Uh, he's like a general in like the fucking US military. That's not bad, alright, that's fine. So, they have a whole... Joe Biden. Yeah. <laughs> That's why he's 